React is building a compiler. Yes, that's the headline. And this headline came from ReactCon, which happened a few days ago, where one of the Facebook employees, Shun, actually gave a pretty awesome talk on what this compiler might look like in future, what this would do, and where the direction is headed towards. So what is a compiler exactly, what this functionality-wise is doing, how this would be helpful to you as a developer, and what you should know about this. Let's discuss a little bit about that in this video. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. All right, so before actually getting into what React compiler would do, this particular thing which is named as a react forget in, in the alpha stage right now let's actually understand what react does right now so whenever you write your react code you would have seen you are using something like babel or the cool kids now are using swc for example and even if this is in js or typescript you need kind of that transpilation because you want to convert that jsx syntax into something which is JavaScript, right? JSX is not technically JavaScript. It's a HTML looking like structure, which uses a lot of JS, but still the browsers don't understand that. So this step over here is transpilation. So when this particular step happens, technically the code which you get, the bundle, which you actually ship to the browser, it's still what you exactly wrote, logic wise and functionality wise as well, right? So the logic, the functionality, is pretty much preserved over here. What React just proposed in the React conf with this compiler over here, this compiler right here, once this runs, it will perform certain optimizations in your code and the resulting bundle which would be generated would functionality wise would remain same and I'm putting an asterisk here because the code would be changed. The logic would also be, obviously, if the functionality is same, logic plus functionality would be same. Code level things would be different in a way that the performance get a lot better, you know, a lot, lot better. I mean, it really depends on app to app, how complex the app is and how much performance that could extract it out. But for example, the demo app, which the Facebook engineer showed, that was doing something like three to 400 renders on a single click. And that just pretty much dropped down to one or two renders, right? Because of that performance thing. So let's discuss what this performance hack is. What is this particular compiler doing? And how does this help in a React-based scenario? All right, so this compiler over here, which has been code named as React Forget, basically, in a nutshell, what we know from the conf, what it does is that it memoizes pretty much everything in your React component. And this is important because this is important why this is not happening automatically and why a compiler is needed for this. So you see, when you write a basic React app, let's say you are creating an interface like CodeDamps Playground, right? In our playground, you know that here you get the browser, right? You get the terminal at the bottom, you get the files over here, right? And you have the Monaco in the center, which allows you to interactively play and learn with code, right? So the CodeDamp Playground, when you click on this single file, you would see that the Monaco editor actually gets changed and the highlighting over here gets different, right? It gets highlighted to that particular selected file. Similarly, when I click on the next file, the same thing happens. When I click on another file or open another folder, that folder opens, right? Now, internally, what we do use is that this particular thing over here is an explorer component, right? And what's happening right now, if we don't use memoization, is that on every single click, this whole file structure is recomputed, this whole tree is recomputed, all the elements are re-rendered, and everything, you would not be able to see it yourself on the screen, but we know that everything is re-rendered, even if it is not changed, right? So if you have four files, like index.html, script.js, and if you have a folder, like assets, and here you have, let's say, file.jpg, and let's say this folder is collapsed initially, when you click on this folder, these two divs would also get re-rendered, right? although they were not required to be re-rendered. Similarly, let's say if this was a complex tree of file structure, right? And if I open a nested folder, maybe something like node modules or somewhere, and I click on, continuously click on that, I don't want every single item to be re-rendered, right? So in order to avoid that, what we say is that each component is memoized, but on certain criteria, right? It is memoized only as long as nothing is being done to this particular component right? In this case, this particular explorer also has this as the file component. 
this as the folder component. So our only parameter which we want to optimize against is that whether this is active or not, right? So if this index.html is active, then it has a different color. If this becomes inactive, then we want to re-render it because we want to change the color, the classes have to be removed and so on. So only that active prop is what we need. If on a click, there is no change in the active prop, we don't want to touch it, right? This is what I know as a developer, right? But when I'm coding on this application, React does not know this. React would assume that I need to check heuristically whether this div needs to be re-rendered or not, whether this div needs to be re-rendered or not, and it'll try to do it every for every particular thing in that component where something has happened, right? Now, if we talk a little bit about this, what components are essentially in React are now functions, right? So you have a function which takes certain input as props and return JSX. So what these guys have done is at least what I believe this compiler assumes is that this function is functional component, number one, super important. And ideally this function is pure, as in it does not do any sort of side effects outside of that particular function, right? So this is this is my assumption of how, what, what, what would be some of these requirements for React Forget to work properly without introducing any sort of bugs or anything. It should be functional and it should be pure component. And the way it works is that React compiler would actually take a look at all the props which are being used over here and it will create a memoization of those components. So it will create this memoization, it will say your function call and it should only be triggered when let's say prop 1 is changed or prop 2 is changed because it is able to see that you are only using prop 1 and 2 in that particular function. The moment this happens, you get massive performance gains in an application as complex as you know this where you have multiple re-renders happening. Why? Because now you are not re-rendering anything at all on DOM, right? Which is not required. The best part about this is that all of this would be abstracted away from you. You would still write the code, which would just look as nice as you can see on the screen, but it's actually transformed into a memoized version of component, which looks much uglier, but is, is much performant. Now, this sort of optimization is something which Svelte does by default, right? Remember we, in the Svelte versus React video, we talked a little bit about how Svelte uses magic in a way that it takes a look at assignment operator and then figures out where, whether that's used in HTML or not. And if the variable is used in HTML, it will attach those certain triggers. But be, because Svelte is a compiler, it's a, not a library, it has much more information when it's compiling that code down to JavaScript, right? Because compilers can get into abstract syntax tree and private variables and take a look at what exactly is happening on a static analysis without running the code. And that is like the thing you need in order to perform this sort of memoization, which Svelte does by default, and which hopefully React would also start doing by default in some time. This feature, as said by the developer, is not production ready. It's not even, I think, available at the moment, and it might be dropped, but there would be something good which would be coming out of this new React compiler. So, yep, that's pretty much it for this new React compiler. Let me know what you think about this. What are your views on React? and this React Forget, the new React compiler, which would probably land sometime next year, hopefully. That is all for this one. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.